Hey everyone, Blake from Digital Cynics here with yet another quick Friday news video. So the PlayStation 5 event just took place on June 11th, and I'll be going over some of the big key highlights regarding the games that were announced as well as the new hardware that was unveiled. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like button, and if you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel. And with all that out of the way, let's talk about what went down at the PlayStation 5 event. Okay. All right, so for new games, kicking the event off, we see a little Rockstar logo pop up. Is this a Red Dead 2 port, GTA 6, or a remastered version of Bully, and it's another port of GTA 5. Cool. All right, so yes, GTA 5 will be making its way over to the PlayStation 5. It looks like it will be getting some more graphical upgrades for the PS5, as well as a new standalone version of Grand Theft Auto Online becoming available free for three months exclusively for PlayStation 5. Following GTA 5, PlayStation Studios came out swinging hard with the unveiling of the new Spider-Man game, Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is the sequel to Insomniac's critically acclaimed Spider-Man 2018. Not too much gameplay was really shown, but what's actually really exciting is that this game is due out for the PS5 this holiday season. Spider-Man 2018 was an amazing open world game for the PS4, and if they can even come close to 2018's quality, the new Spider-Man should definitely be a solid hit. Insomniac is also working on a new Ratchet & Clank game, which they also showed off at the PlayStation 5 event. Titled Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, this is the next chapter in the beloved action-adventure series. And Microsoft, seriously, take notes, this is what gameplay looks like for your events. The gameplay looks really solid and smooth, the environment looks amazing, and the combat seems like a lot of fun, especially with this new interesting Rift tether mechanic that allows you to what looks like you jump from rift to rift almost instantaneously. Insomniac even mentioned about going to other planets almost instantaneously. I'm not sure if this is following that same type of mechanic in the footage or not, but if they can pull something like that off that would be super cool. It's been a while since I've played a Ratchet and Clank game and I'm very excited for this one. There's also a lot of really cool looking third party titles worth mentioning. We had Counterplay show off some combat gameplay footage from the game Godfall. The combat looked real fluid and exciting, and I'm honestly getting some sort of Destiny vibe from this game, so it will be very exciting to get my hands on. I know Brendan himself is super excited for this game. As of recording, Godfall is set to debut on PS5 and PC this holiday season. Another cool third-party game that I'm personally really excited for is Deathloop. This is a new IP by the folks over at Arcane Studios. I am not 100% certain what this plot is entirely about, but the best that I can assume and surmise is that it's essentially some sort of futuristic Groundhog Day type plot mixed with some Dishonored-like mechanics. I love Arcane Studios as a company and I think they make some really great stuff. I love the Dishonored series, I love Prey, and yeah, I'm very excited to get my hands on this game and see what it's all about. At the PlayStation 5 event, we saw a new IP from Capcom called Pragmata. This almost looks like a spiritual successor to Dead Space, although I could be wrong, and I've been wrong before, but not much was really given to us in terms of information with this trailer. But yeah, as Brendan pointed out to me when we were talking about this, um, it screams Dead Space, especially even just given the armor. We saw some footage for Hitman 3, the conclusion to the World Assassination Trilogy, and we also got to see a trailer for the new Resident Evil game, Resident Resident Evil Village. This is the new game that follows the events of Resident Evil 7, and the game will focus much more on combat and exploration compared to that of RE7. I was also very surprised to see a good amount of indie games being showcased at this event as well. Just to name a few, there was a new Oddworld game announced, Oddworld Soulstorm. There was Kenna Bridge Spirits from the development team Ember Lab. This game's a single player action adventure game combining exploration, discovery, and high speed combat all together. There's also Solar Ash, a single player open world game made by the folks behind the excellent game Hyperlight Drifter. There were quite a few more indie games showcased, but those were just a few that I was personally intrigued by. And the last big game showcased at this event, to not a whole lot of surprise, was Horizon Zero Dawn 2. We got a really cool in-engine cinematic trailer, but what was actually surprising was the fact that it didn't give out a release date. I was honestly sure this was going to be a launch title, but either way, it's nice to see that the game's in the works. I think it'll definitely be the reason that many people get a PS5, especially given how good the first game was. All right, so there was one other thing. Oh yeah, uh, the PlayStation 5 was unveiled. 
So it looks like while Team Xbox decided to go with the iconic design of large refrigerator, PlayStation decided to go the route of Wi-Fi router. But seriously, all jokes aside, I think this design is very cool, very unique. Uh, I, I definitely like the white matte plastic. I'm glad they got rid of the glossy plastic that we saw from the PlayStation 4. I think the blue LEDs are a very nice touch, and the PS5 will have actually two versions, one with an optical drive that plays 4K Blu-ray, and one without and is just exclusively for digital content. Most likely, the all-digital PS5 will be the more affordable option while maintaining all of the same performance as the optical version. While I was expecting to see the PS5 unveiled, I was kind of surprised that there were some accessories shown off as well. Looks like Sony has a new pair of headphones along the way, supporting PlayStation's new 3D audio feature. Um, there is a media remote and a controller charging dock. And while these accessories aren't anything really too special, with the exception maybe of the headphones, I personally really like this because I like it when console manufacturers have their own licensed accessories and I just hope that we continue to see more being produced. All in all, I really think this was an excellent event, and I think PlayStation knocked it out of the park. Given how good this press event was, uh, I really think that Xbox has some catching up to do if they really want any chance of having a leg up in this console market. All we really need to wait for now is the pricing. All right, so with that bit of news out of the way, it is time for this week's Comments of the Week. For those of you who don't know, every Friday video we try to go back to the previous Friday's video and pick out a comment that we find either funny or interesting and give some commentary on that. And this week's comment of the week goes to Don't Ruin the Vibe. So this comment was in response to the Days of Play sale video that Brennan did as well as the giveaway that we mentioned in the video for crossing our 500 subscriber threshold. Don't Ruin the Vibe says, Days of Play have good PSVR games on sale like Skyrim. Best of luck, and I'm not saying that so I sound nice, but if I do get chosen, I will probably buy Skyrim. Well, I can say that I do not blame you at all. I think Skyrim for the PSVR is an excellent excellent choice if you have never played it. And even though the PSVR is kind of dated now in terms of VR tech, I can still easily spend hours at a time in that game. I mean, even just with vanilla Skyrim, you can have a lot of fun on just the computer or the console version itself. You add VR to that mix and it just kind of opens the floodgates even further. But yeah, don't ruin the vibe. Thank you so much for contributing and leaving your comment. Good luck on the contest. If you're interested in participating in the giveaway yourself, uh, I'll leave a card here for Brennan's video that kind of goes into detail on that giveaway. But that about does it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, as always, so much for checking out the video and checking out the channel. If you like this video, please do click the like button as it is the best way to help small channels like us get seen by the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment down below on what you thought about the place PlayStation event. And let me know what you think about the PlayStation 5 design. Be sure to hit us up on all of our social media like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you're new around here and want to see more content like this one, be sure to hit the red subscribe button and the notification bell icon down below to stay up to date on everything we're doing. We do videos every Monday and Friday as well as live stream every Wednesday, usually around 9 p.m. Central Time. But seriously, that's enough rambling out of me. Thank you again so much for watching the video and checking out the channel. My name is Blake. This has been a Digital Cynics experience. And for all things, games, tech, movies, and other nerdy things in between, be sure to subscribe to Digital Cynics. Have a good one, everyone. We'll see you Monday.